Two matches remaining this season and we are still in with a shout of Champions League football next year. There are three teams on the same number of points all battling it out for fourth place. But to gain pole position, we now have to go away and get a point at Liverpool. This should uh, be a fun end to the season. Greetings my excellent friends and welcome to Club 3 Part 15 of the Director of Moneyball. I'm Kirk Sheridan and we are in with a shout of taking charge of this Champions League race. We go away to Liverpool now. The other teams that we're in this Champions League race with have already played today. Tottenham managed to pick up a 2-0 victory at home to Southampton which brought them a level on points with us. 63 points with one match to play. Chelsea were in pole position, but they drew away at Leicester, so they are also now level on points with us, having played a game more. That means if we can pick up a point away at Liverpool today, we've pretty much got this nailed. Because on the final day, we are at home to already relegated Wolves, whereas Chelsea and Spurs are playing each other. So I've got to fancy our chances of three points on that final day. I'm less confident about our chances against Liverpool today, though. I have to be honest. They are almost champions again, and we're expected to lose. And in fact, since this save started, we've beaten them twice. We did pick up a one-all draw earlier this season, but look at the quality of their team. Martinelli's got 18 goals and 11 assists. Harvey Elliott, 12 goals, 16 assists. Mo Salah at the age of 36 is still banging in the goals. So's Diego Jota at the age of 32. Two. I mean, don't get me wrong, out of all of the Everton teams that I've put up against Liverpool, this is by far the best one, by a country mile. Sucic has been a revelation in that Metzala role this season with 10 assists and 4 goals. Ben McNamee, remember, was playing in the Championship last year and he scored 15 goals and got 6 assists from the inside right position. Markovic has dropped off a tiny little bit since, since he joined us. Strangely enough, Anthony Clark hasn't fancied him to start every match, but will it be enough? Enough. This is where you left me at the end of the last episode. We just climbed into fourth place and we maintain that for a good stretch, but we've dipped into that fifth position recently. And it is so unfortunate because it was just one freak result that turned this tide against us. Otherwise, we would be pretty much there already. After that Ajax victory, but loss on aggregate, we beat Watford 3-1 at home. We went away to Norwich and beat them 1-0. We beat Leeds 3-0 at home. We went away to Newcastle, a match that I was expecting us to lose and did, 3-1, but then picked up three points away at Leicester. It was this freaky result against Brentford, though, that did us over. We hadn't lost a match at home in 10 games, and all of a sudden, we just didn't turn up. Man City, a 3-0 defeat away was expected, but we've given ourselves a fighting chance with victories away at Fulham and at home against Stoke. So, right now, it is the big one. Three points, as ludicrously unlikely as it is, would pretty much guarantee us Champions League football next season. But, as I say, if we could just get one point, one point away at Anfield. Come on, Anthony. You know how much faith I have in you. You know how much I believe in what you've done with this amazing team. But you know what? There aren't many managers in world football that we've encountered who look this much better on paper than you as Jurgen Klopp. So um, you're young. You're up and coming. So is this Everton team. Show us what you can do, boys. It's a packed out Anfield hosting this make or break match. I must be honest, I don't fancy our chances. But we get a highlight from the kickoff. Pintado plays it back to Vico, who lofts it up to. Oh, Hannibal is. Oh, I thought he was going to break through there. Allison hoofs the ball up the pitch. And Cordero hoofs the ball back up again. This is uh, entertaining end-to-end -end football here. McNamee, oh my word! It is less than 30 seconds played at Anfield and Everton are 1-0 up. I've probably just broken my microphone and your ears. I'm very sorry, but I could not control myself. What an incredible start! Beautiful deft touch there from Hannibal, and it's that man, McNamee, again. Championship player of the year last season. He's just tearing the Premier League to pieces. 
Oh my word, this is incredible. So he, this is the team that we've started with. I didn't even get a chance to show you the lineup. Christensen in goal, Bruce Smith, Pintado, Vico, and Cordero at the back. Cordero playing because Koskin is actually injured, so big match for Cordero to step into. Lado, Rida, and Hannibal in midfield. Rukovina, McNamee, and Roque playing up front. So again, we have our best player in theory on the bench. Markovic there. Not been trusted to start against Liverpool away from home. Sucic, one of our best players of the season, also on the bench. Keiki, our best defender on paper, also on the bench. We have so much strength in depth now. The question is, can we hold on? I've got no doubt in my mind whatsoever that Liverpool are going to be going hell for leather now to get back into this game. They need points to secure the Premier League title. We obviously need points to secure Champions League football. They have 70% possession, but we are restricting their chances. And of course, the second that I say that, we see Liverpool on the attack. But McNamee doing a great press there. That is something he's been fantastic at this season. Oh my goodness me. Well... An injured Christensen playing in goal there, saved by the posts. I did actually think that uh, we would see Cerner making his first team debut, but no, it's Christensen manages to keep hold of the place in goal. But Liverpool with a long throw into the box, and that is a cracking finish. You could just tell as soon as that fell to Bellanova on the edge of the box there, that was probably going to be hammered into the net, and it was. Well, we'll always have those first 30 seconds. I will never forget that in all of my years playing football manager. Oh, Bellanova just given far, far too much space. Great finish, great piece of control, excellent volley. But we should have closed him down. That has put them ever so slightly ahead on XG, but we've had more shots on target than they have quite amazingly. Only 67% of our passes completed though, so it looks like we're playing quite direct counter-attacking long ball football at the moment. I'm going to hold on to the fact here that some of Liverpool's players are looking quite tired compared to ours. We've obviously done a better job of resting and rotating our team recently than Liverpool have. So if we can hold on to this point, I think we've probably guaranteed fourth place as long as we get those three points against Wolves. Now Martinelli with a crossfield pass to Salah and oh my word, that I thought was going to be going into the top corner but no it's over the top from the Liverpool attacker. McNamee with a 7 rating, Hannibal 7.4. Right change is about to be made I would assume from Anthony Clark and we have a corner. Reader floats it in. Far post. Oh just past the back post and Liverpool on the attack again. Right now this is getting tense. Oh it's these kind of matches that are very very difficult to commentate. Oh my goodness me. There really are far too many chances on our goal for my liking. And Liverpool coming at us again. I mean, what, what do we expect? It's the 70th minute. They're fighting for the title. It's at Anfield. And they're through. Christensen just can't get to the goal. But could this be ruled out by the referee? Is it offside? I'm not sure it was. No. No. That's a shame. We were in with a shout of points in this match for most of it. Oh, and Christensen should have done so much better there. Covering his near post just needed to stand tall. Reader has a chance to break though. But again, it's a long ball. It just comes to nothing because we're not actually finding the man up front. We are disappointingly playing ourselves into trouble. And Vico, that was absolutely... Bicetic has come on. In his place, we're down to 10 men, and that is such a disappointing way to end this match. Cordero, what were you thinking? You're on a yellow card. You could have been sent off there as well. Oh, the team are absolutely losing it now at Anfield. Lado, though, keeps the ball for us. Bruce Smith, what can he do? It's that long ball up front again that just comes to nothing. I don't know why we keep trying it. It's clearly not working. It worked once in the first minute, and since then we've been trying it again and again and again and again. So I'd like us to hold on for another six minutes plus injury time so that we don't get too decimated. Six minutes of injury time. We managed to hold on, it looks like, for a 2-1 defeat at Anfield. Which, all things considered, 
is actually not too bad. Certainly didn't end as well as it started. Absolutely dominant momentum from Liverpool there. What do you expect? They're champions of England. But as I said earlier, that McNamee goal is going to stay in my memory for a long, long time. And to make matters worse, Roque is injured. He's now out for the rest of the season. Oh, I've got a decision to make here. He's pulled his hamstring. Physio says he'll be out for 10 to 12 days. Do I get him through the next game against Wolves? This is one of those situations that don't quite allow for you to play perfectly as a director of football in Football Manager because, of course, really this decision should be down to our head coach, Anthony Clark. But the reality of the situation is this. If we want to sneak that fourth place and guarantee ourselves Champions League football next year, we must win against Wolves. If we manage that and Tottenham beat or draw with Chelsea, we will go into fourth place. If Chelsea win, the best we can hope for is fifth place. And in fact, if Chelsea do win, we will secure that fifth place regardless of whether we win, lose or draw against Wolves as long as we don't completely fluff it and finish up on the end of an absolute hiding because we're already ahead of Spurs on goal difference. Spurs are away at Chelsea though, but both sides are in better form than we are. Oh, this is going to be an incredibly tense last day. Right, that swings it. Oh no, 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 no. No, I won't do it. We're going to trust in our strength in depth. We will let Roque recover from that pulled hamstring. How much am I going to come to regret that at the end of the season? Right, we're just going to make sure that our first teamers who did not play against Liverpool have a run out in the under-21s to build their fitness. I want a fully fresh squad for Clark to choose from against Wolves. You can see Anthony Clark's getting his tactical practice in. We're training our attacking shadow play, our defensive shape, our attacking movement, our defensive shadow play. Clark does not want any slip-ups. And it looks like it was a good decision to give those first teamers some game time in the under-21s. Markovic getting a 7.7, .7, Cuellar 7.3, Sucic a 9 and a goal, Dire Mabude a 9.7 rating and a hat-trick. All of them ready to step into the breach against Wolves now. Uh-oh, more bad news. Rukovina now injured. He'll be out for five to seven days after pulling his pectoral muscle while lifting weights. That's one of the more stupid injuries I've heard of this season. I'm going to take my chance as director of football to praise the players who've trained well in the week leading up to this final match of the season. It's a great way to just boost morale that little bit further and also feels like an entirely justifiable thing for a senior manager in any business to do to be honest look at the number of them who are training well all the way down to a taser at the bottom everybody above an eight for this week's training performance absolutely brilliant stuff I think they're up for this. And in fact, there's only four players in the entire squad who are currently training who are below an eight rating. Vinicius, Kwanzaa, Keiki and Reader. Well, yeah, this team want to put in a good showing against Wolves, that's for sure. Well, we're odds on favourites for this match. As noted, neither team in the best form. But you've got to think, if it hadn't been for that early season form, we would probably have secured Champions League football already. Might have even been pushing for the title. And on the morning of the last day of the season, look at this absolutely brilliant confirmation of the job that I'm doing at Everton Football Club. As the director of Moneyball, as you know, I'm looking to make a profit on our transfers, making sure that we're maximising the value of our players. And we do have the best profit on transfers in the entire Premier League. To be honest, that's a lot less than I would like, but we have been very much reinvesting any sales over the last couple of seasons. But bear in mind, Manchester United have spent a net £100 million near enough, and a languishing down in eighth place just goes to show that with some money ball thinking, you can definitely punch above your weight. And we have arrived. Three points are needed for us to finish ahead of Chelsea. We're looking for Tottenham to do us a favour at Stamford Bridge. I just want to secure that fourth place. Last season, we snuck in. I hadn't even realised that England would get an extra Champions League place because of the UEFA coefficients. That is likely to happen again this year. 
But I don't want to sit around waiting for a few weeks like I did last season. I want that fourth place. I want to know today that we're in the Champions League next season. Anthony Clark versus Thiago Motta. This time the attributes are very much weighted towards our main man. So I shall take my final holiday of the season. And here we are, Wolves fans, packing out that end behind the goal. The rest of the stadium, I would imagine, filled to capacity with Everton fans who want to see us secure Champions League football for next season. We will keep an eye on both latest scores and the league table, but the lineup for this match, Christensen in goal, club captain Vinicius comes in at the back. Ahead of Bruce Smith, that is a big call. Keiki, Pino and Bicetic on the right of defence. Lado, Sucic and Hannibal in the middle. So Markovic again misses out. Malero on the left this time with McNamee and Oteza up front coming in for the injured Vitor Roque. So a lot of rotation there, but on paper we should still have plenty in our locker to get three points against Wolves. They've been in dreadful form this season, but of course they get the first attacking highlight of the match. Oh, don't do this to me, Everton. No, he's clean for it. Oh, my goodness me. Right, great save there from Christensen. Oh, well, if you didn't think it was going to be tense beforehand, now you know. Coleman floats the corner in, but Christensen jumps tall, claims it easily. Excellent work, Christensen. Right, boots the ball up to the top and comes to nothing. I would like to see us keep the ball on the deck a little more in this match. I can understand why we're trying to play that direct style against Liverpool, but I think against Wolves, a team that we should have plenty, plenty in the locker to be. Oh dear! Chelsea gone. Oh, quick equaliser there. So Chelsea went up in front against Tottenham, but then quickly conceded an equaliser. I wasn't sure there whether somebody got injured or whether they were actually sent off in that Chelsea Tottenham match so we'll have a look at that the next time an opportunity arises but as it stands we're just building up play on the left flank again trying to play a ball over the top it looks like Wolves Liverpool we've been found out with this style of play um, many teams just dropping deep and covering with their central defenders just basically able to head out easily any ball that we're trying to hit over the top but Vinicius as a wing back oh plays a lovely ball down the line for Sucic he gets into the box and oh my word a taser scores he has played fantastically when able to this season not started anywhere near as many matches as last year but he has once again shown his predatory instincts just always looking to get into a position in front of the final defender oh and to be honest, that was a very unlucky clearance from Chalaba. He just kicked the ball into Oteza. I'm not sure how much Oteza actually knew about it. Oh, I think that might scupper our chances of Champions League football. I just noticed that Tottenham have had a red card against Chelsea. Oh, well, Wolves clean through there, but spooned the shot over the bar. So, half-time. We're 1-0 up. Fairly even match, though, I have to say. I would expect us to be doing more, but obviously this team are going to be very, very, very nervous as things stand. So the question is, can Tottenham hold on against Chelsea? If they can maintain that scoreline, if they cannot concede and we manage to stay in front against Wolves, then we will finish in fourth place and secure Champions League football for next season. But there again... Just that hoofed ball up the pitch from deep and it's just coming to nothing. We're just letting Wolves build the pressure. Oh, I really want us to play a different style, Anthony. Come on, have a bit more confidence in the players. Lado to Pino to Keiki. He's a ball-playing defender. Let's see what he can do, just taking the ball up the pitch with a bit more style, a bit more finesse, a bit more pinache. Vinicius to Malero. Runs through, and there is a good through ball, though. McNamee to a taser again. Oh, and it's a tame finish. A very tame finish there on his weaker right foot, to be fair. Chelsea still drawing <laughs> against Tottenham. This is getting so tense. We have a corner. It's Malero to take. Is he going to float it to? No, I was going to say, is he floating it to the back post? No, it really is a pretty poor 
Oh, my word, Bolero! Oh, ho, 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 ho. He was winding up for a fantastic effort there, but it was off the crossbar. Oh, my goodness. Come on, this is a fantastic football story. It's incredibly tense on the final day. We're in the final five minutes of normal time. Time is ticking away. Tottenham are still holding on against Chelsea. There's four minutes of injury time. What are you doing to me? Come on, McNamee. Come on, just run it into the corner. Oh, when I say run it into the corner, that means you, not give it back to Wolves. What are you thinking? Goodness gracious. Right, well, we managed to get it back in. Bruce Smith is on now. Oteza to Suchic to Malero. And Oteza is in. Oh, it's another weak finish on his right foot. Come on, just hammer it in. Tottenham have taken the lead against Chelsea. Ten man Tottenham have taken the lead against Chelsea. If we can hold on just 60 more seconds. 40 seconds. 30 seconds. Come on. Time is running away. Time is running away. Don't do anything stupid, Everton. Don't do anything stupid. Just take your time. Take it easy. Hold on. No need to do anything daft. Just play it nice and easy. You don't even need to aim for it. There we go. We won on the final day. What was the final Tottenham-Chelsea result? And Tottenham did it. Alfie Devine, a 93rd minute winner away at Stamford Bridge for 10-man Tottenham. Oh my goodness me. That means Tottenham finish on 66 points, but we managed to secure fourth place with a one-goal difference advantage over Tottenham. What a season. Remember that dreadful early season form caused by the shocking dynamics of the Diro Mabude contract situation that never really actually was? We were down in 17th place at one point, but I never lost faith in Anthony Clark. I knew he was the right man for this job. And in fact, if we continued this form the entire season, we probably could have been competing for the title. And there is confirmation we've qualified for the Champions League with a top four finish. Board set our initial budgets, £2.1 million wage budget and £60 million to spend. And given my habit of making more money for ourselves to spend through some transfer sales, I suspect this could be an epic, epic summer. This will be our second season in succession in the Champions League. I suspect the board will probably start raising their expectations in a bit because they only wanted us to avoid relegation this year. We overperformed last year, that's fair, on our first season in the Premier League, but this year it's actually felt like the start of something quite sustainable and very, very special. Absolutely amazing though that despite that, another Champions League qualification, the supporters are just a C plus rating. They're joyous that we qualify for the Champions League, but they're disappointed with the performances of some of the players, so a C plus is all we get. Wow. Turns out these blues are quite hard to please. So I guess the question for next year is how much can I strengthen the squad to compete on four different fronts? And in fact, how much do I need to? Because those six Moneyball signings we brought in in January will all get better. Our highest performers all below the age of 27. This is a young squad, a great squad. Next year, though, can Anthony Clark and I make it a title-challenging squad? That has to be our ambition. So thank you so much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on to find out the second the next part drops. We'll be going through a season review and some very important transfers. So in the meantime, be excellent to each other. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>